Now, a fun activity to help them do this is to create a time capsule. Capsule? Time capsule. Capsule? Capsule. Oh no, here we go. Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones, and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. Welcome 2021. Happy New Year, everyone. I am so excited to put 2020 in the past and move on. And while I don't think things will, you know, magically be better on January 1st, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm excited to see what this year has in store. I do wanna share with you guys that I am going to start uploading two times a week in 2021. So I will definitely be here still on my Sundays for my Sunday Spotlight. And I'm also going to upload on Thursday mornings. For the last two years, I have uploaded every single Sunday, just sharing a quick activity, tip, or idea that you can take and use in your classroom right away. And over the years, with the help from you guys, from emailing me and leaving comments, I just have a huge list of ideas and activities and different things I want to share with you guys and not enough time. So I figured I would start uploading two videos a week to help share some of these great ideas with you. I am so excited to start uploading more. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel by clicking that subscribe button and also click that bell. That bell helps you get notified. You'll get an email every single time that I upload a video. That way you don't miss any. Now that it is a brand new year, I wanted to go ahead and share a couple ideas for celebrating the new year in your classroom. Many of you will be heading back into the classroom tomorrow, so these are just some quick last minute ideas that I think might help if you wanna do them this week. Today I have for you a free comprehension passage, I have two books that I think you will love, and I also have a craft idea that I think will be a lot of fun. So let me grab those for you. While I do that, be sure to like this video, and like I said, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Let's go. Okay, so when you are back in the classroom after the new year, I know many teachers like to have their students make some new year's resolutions or some new year's goals that are usually academic based or maybe social emotional learning based. Maybe they wanna be kinder or you know, be a great friend this year or something along those lines. And to get students to start thinking about you know, what a resolution is and how to go ahead and make one, I like to use my free close reading passage and it looks like this. Basically, this is just a simple comprehension passage where students can learn what a resolution is. And then I also have them go ahead and make a New Year's resolution like this right here with this page where they will actually share what their resolution is. And they'll also think of two things that will help them accomplish that resolution. And lastly, I like to have them work on a little bit of vocabulary. So the vocabulary sheet looks like this. And the three words that we focus on that were in the passage are resolution, succeed, and accomplish. I made this passage a few years ago with my second graders when I was a K through two literacy teacher. And I wanted us to kind of read and talk about, first of all, what a resolution is, how to go about making one before we set some goals for ourselves. So this freebie is over on TPT. The cover looks like this and it will be linked down in the description so you can grab it after this video. So after you've gone ahead and talked about what a resolution is, you've made some New Year's resolutions, there's also a few books that I love to read. Now there are quite a few New Year's Eve or New Year's Day books, and I wanted to go ahead and share two that I really love and think will be very beneficial this year. The first book that I love is called Shantae Keys in the New Year's Peas. This is a great book because it is about a little girl and her and her family always make uh, black eyed peas for the new year. And in fact, this is something I didn't know. This is a tradition I didn't know about, but I guess it is pretty popular to bring good luck and prosperity in the new year. Many African American families and families down south actually eat New Year's peas not New Year's peas, they eat black eyed peas as part of their New Year's dish. So in this story, Shante Keys and her aunt, I believe, I think it's her aunt or her grandmother, I think it's her grandma, they are making New Year's a New Year's dish and they need black eyed peas, but they have run out of the black eyed peas. So the little girl, Shanti Keys, she has to go around to her neighbors and see if they have any black eyed peas. And as she's doing that, she visits all these different neighbors who let them know, they let her know, oh, I actually don't celebrate the New Year or I don't eat black peas on the New Year. Some of them celebrate Diwali, some of them are Chinese and they have a Chinese New Year. And so throughout this book, you get to learn about a 
lot of different traditions and a lot of different cultures and the way they celebrate the new year. It's a really cute book that goes ahead and explains some different traditions and ideas from different cultures all around the world. And at the end of the book, Shante Keys actually has them all over all her neighbors she went and visited. She has them all over to her house so they can celebrate and see what she does with her culture and they all eat the black eyed peas together. And also what's cool, let me show you, is at the very end of the book, it actually has a little nonfiction part. The whole book is fiction and it's actually a rhyming book, but it has a whole nonfiction page here. I don't know if you can actually see that. I don't know if it's going to focus, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it, where it explains all about the New Year's tradition and the Black Eyed Peas, and then it has some foods that have special meaning uh, in different countries for the new year. So it talks about what they eat in Austria, Germany, Greece, Japan, the Jewish New Year, Korea, Switzerland. And on the very last page, it actually has a recipe for Grandma Louise's Hoppin' John, which sounds like it is a nice big soup, I think maybe, like a soup or a chili type deal with the black eyed peas in it. So it has a little recipe, but it's a really cute book and a great one for you to kick off the new year. Now, the next book I want to mention I think is going to be particularly important for this year, and that is The Stars Will Shine and or The Stars Will Still Shine by Cynthia Ryland. And this is a just a sweet and comforting book about thinking towards the new year and that good things are always coming. So no matter what has happened in the past or what's happening right now, just kind of looking at the future with some positive light. It's not a very long book. In fact, it's pretty short with some beautiful illustrations. But but like I said, it's just a really comforting book to get your students excited about a new year and ready to greet the new year with a little bit of hope, especially after such a rough 2020. I will go ahead and link both of those books in the description down below in case you want to get them for your classroom or for your home library. But um, also if you are teaching digitally or if you just need them faster, I'm sure you can Google and find a read aloud on YouTube. Okay, the third thing I like to do to help ring in the new year in my classroom is after you've gone ahead and defined a resolution and made some for yourself, read some really sweet books about the new year, the last thing I like to do is kind of reflect on the past year. You know, the new year is exciting because you get to put a year behind you and look forward, but I also think it's important for students to think about the year that has just passed and try to find some highlights or some exciting things or even just think about kind of what you you were like in a very you know basic way of what was your favorite color in 2020 how old were you in 2020 how tall were you what was your favorite snack because we know that as time goes on that things like that they change so as a teacher you can kind of frame this looking back on the old year in a deep and meaningful way and try to have them pick out some things that you know were a highlight of the year and as a teacher you could explain that you know even though we had to spend so much time home it really helped you grow closer to your family or pick up those small moments that you really loved you could also completely frame this in a very kind of surface level activity as well like I said talking about what was your favorite color in 2020 what was your favorite TV show what did you do a lot of in 2020 and just kind of getting them to think about what they were like last year now a fun activity to help your students do this is to go ahead and create a time capsule and you could do this a few different ways you could do one with your entire classroom maybe you could go ahead and make a little book or make a box and students can all write down on a piece of paper and draw a picture and again framing kind of your question is it going to be something deep is it going to be something surface level that they write that's up to you but they can share something about 2020 that they want to go ahead and either remember forever so they put it in their time capsule or maybe they want to forget about it they want to write it down and kind of leave it in 2020 again you can frame this however you'd like and they can go ahead and add it to a class time capsule i also saw this really cute idea from mrs richardson's class I'm going to insert a picture here and I believe this is actually free over on her blog so I will link this down below in the description but there's a bunch of little questions and you can have them printed out on different colored paper and students can fill out those different answers and then they can just wrap up the paper and put it in an empty water bottle that they can keep forever. I thought that was a really cute idea that I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys. So there are three ideas to help you celebrate the new year with your students in your classroom. I hope you enjoyed these and you can find them useful and maybe use one or two of them in your classroom. Tell me down in the comments which ideas you liked, which one you might use, or if you have any ideas of your own that have worked in the past that you really love to do with your kids. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I will see you on Thursday and Sunday next week. See ya.